Hello, everybody. We're here today doing, you know, strategy three of unmaking a murderer. You may have already seen me my uh, reviews of strategy one and two. If you haven't, you can go check them out. If you're on my YouTube channel, simple enough. You can just go to my channel and look for the other ones. If you're on Facebook, just wait till this one ends or look at the videos down lower there. You'll see that there's going to be a couple other ones named Sean Atwood's Unmaking a Murderer. And then just look for the one that says strategy three and four and stuff like that and and I'll, they'll all be labeled in such a way but anyways but uh so this is strategy three we're here to talk about today and strategy three is coerced false confessions that's what it's that's the name of the chapter or the strategy and we know what that's going to be about we know that's going to be about brendan because that's where the coerced confession is in this case so before he actually starts going into brendan though he starts out he talks a little bit about melissa kaluzinski now she's a client of kathleen zellner um, I have watched uh, some of the datelines about her uh, recently when she appealed, and I really thought they had the evidence, but it's really sad what's going on there. I mean, yes, it does appear that Ms. Melissa Kaluzinski was uh, coerced, in my opinion. Um, I mean, she resisted them for the longest, longest time, but, you know, they just, after nine hours of keeping her in a little room, you know, she she wore down, and she said whatever she, they wanted her to say, essentially. I mean, they, and it's what they suggested that she should say. It's not like it came from her naturally. So, but, and, and that's one of the problems with Brendan. So that's why I bring that up because, you know, when the, when, when the, when the confession doesn't come naturally, when the investigator has to feed it to you, it becomes a very weak confession, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion. So, but anyway, so he brings up Melissa Kaluzinski, but then he goes into, Bashan goes into the next bit where he's basically kind of just, Describing the read technique, how the read technique works, the different steps of it, um, and and how it basically gets, you know, and for you know how they use it, the way that they you know enforce the little techniques in in it, and the way that they employ them. So he he kind of go gives you a rough overview of that, and then he goes into uh, the the interview where Fassbender and Wiegert. Uh, come and get Brendan out of school. And by the way, it was without Barb's permission on, on February 22nd, they pulled him out of school. There's no record of the interview. Um, only, you know, and, and like I said, it was done without Barb's permission. Barb, Barb has clearly stated she did not give permission for that day for them to go and get her son out of school. So, you know, shady things going all, all always on here. I mean, are always going on around Brendan in this case. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious. So, you know, We'll move right on there. Um, he brings up, he brings up, essentially after you know after that little segment of the interview, he brings up the fact that Fastbender and Weger were fact feeding. They were fact feeding Brendan and giving him the answers he needed, that they needed him to essentially regurgitate back to them, because they needed those statements of, of him implying his own guilt. So, um, pretty pretty messed up, really. But you know what are you gonna do? So it's. It's, you know, you got to wait for the legal system to just work its way out. But, you know, hopefully with, with books like Sean's and, 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 and a lot of awareness out there that we'll get there eventually. But so in this book, he actually gets a, an ex, kind of an exclusive interview with Barb. And Barb it goes ahead and says a few things um, in here. And I'm going to go ahead and just pick out the one, one statement that she made that I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share with you here. But she makes a few. She says a few different things there that are interesting. But... Um, she, she says that, that she, um, she was actually told that if she tried to leave or, you know, and take Brendan and, and leave the Fox Hills resort, that she would get arrested. Now I find that interesting because they were saying that they were taking Brendan there and her and, and Brendan and, and I believe what was it, Bobby or Blaine, uh, took him there because it was like for their safety or whatever, but, but she didn't want to be there. And if she wanted to leave, they were going to arrest her. See, Here's, this is actually a couple things. I, I, and I know it was painful for Barb. I know the whole situation was unpleasant for Barb, but number one, if she had, if she had pressed the issue on March 1st of saying, you know, no, I, I do not authorize you to pull my son out of school. It would have forced, it would have forced their hand. They would have been forced at that point to say your son is under arrest and it would change the whole dynamic of the way that this interview went down. But you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I'm not criticizing Barb at all. She she was 
doing the best she could in a situation that she felt overwhelmed in. I mean, no doubt of that. But, and then the same thing, and then the same thing with this Fox Hills thing. If she had decided to grab Brendan and grab her sons and try to leave and force them to arrest her, then it would have put a whole different spin on what happened on March 1st and, you know, all that stuff. It would have put a whole different light on all of it. And it would have been a lot different the way it played out. And I really kind of kind of regret the fact that it didn't end up kind of going that way but i mean i understand that barb was trying to be cooperative she was trying to you know help investigators she didn't think she had any reason to worry so you know anyways (laughs) so then it moves on from it moves on from his little conversation with barb into talking about the the may 13th call that basically was instigated by o'kelly when o'kelly um you know, did his little interview or interrogation with Brendan, um, and getting, telling Brendan that he needs to tell the truth and, and hopefully he'll, he'll only do 20 years instead of, you know, life or whatever, you know, so, and then, and sets up the, 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 the interview with Mark Wiegert and Fassbender the next day in which Mark Wiegert and Fassbender tell him he needs to call his mom and tell his mom and all this stuff that they had basically bullied him into confessing again, essentially. So he ends up making that call to his mom where he says what they tell him to say. And so that call was used against him in court. It's essentially the only other piece of evidence besides his own confession. So um, that's why that gets brought up. So he goes into that call and then he moves into, well, I'll just show you right here. And so here we have Laura Nyrider and Steve Drizzen, two of Brendan's guardian angels, and also Robert Dvorak, who isn't shown here. But And so now we move on to some of the biggest stars, in my opinion, when it comes to Brendan Dassey. And you just saw who, and that's Nyrider and Drizzen. Awesome. Love them. They are very sharp, very good at what they do, very well versed in, in the law that they practice. And, and they are, you know... They are powerful advocates for juveniles in in the legal system and 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 the way that juveniles get treated in the legal system, and they should be applauded for that. They are they are really really doing great work, and and I uh, I just think that they're awesome. So, but he goes in here and he talks a little bit about you know some of Ny- some of Laura Nyrider's insights and some of her thoughts about the case, and and then it goes into um, he goes into with uh, Drizzen. Uh, he goes, Drizzen goes through explaining exactly kind of how the read technique works, the way that, that law enforcement and, and these entities will use it, um, and how it's particularly, um, unfair with juveniles and that sort of thing. And then it moves into, uh, Judge Duffin's decision. Magistrate Duffin, who overturned Brendan's conviction, um, to begin with here. Um, it talks about that and talks about that 91 page decision that judge duffin made and then it goes into talking about the appeal that was made that brad schimmel made the appeal blocking brendan's release and so now we've all you know you know been you know waiting for that and actually we now know just recently we uh, we got to hear the oral arguments if you haven't heard the oral arguments i am go ahead and just if you're here on my youtube channel go on my videos and you'll see there's one that says highlights from the uh, oral arguments for Brendan Dassey's overturned conv- conviction, conviction, you go ahead and go there. And if 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 you don't want to listen to the highlights, you can go down in the info box below, and you can click. There's a link there that will take you to the entire full audio of it. So, just so you know. But yes, so he goes into talking about how that how the the appeal was made, the release was blocked, and then, um, and and like I said, then you know we now know that there have been the oral arguments have been made, and it really looks really really very good for Brendan. I think Brendan's in a really really good spot at this point in time. So, anyways, that does it for Strategy Three, people. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I this book is phenomenal. I I really really encourage everybody to run out and get a copy of it. It's it's just a very interesting read, and and it just goes over all of the basics of what happened here with this case. And how things got off the rails because of bad practices. Things that people shouldn't have been doing that they were. So if you haven't already, please hit subscribe and we'll see you guys next time.